hello, welcome. <laughs> um, please accept the apology. I don't know where to look. I mean, I know the camera's here, but if I look there, then you could see me well, but then I can't see me. So pretend that I'm really not looking away from you. Um, what I wanted to do today is no music, no gimmicks, nothing. I want to work on the, our breathing. A lot of times what's happening when I'm at my work, um, people are coming in with their masks on. Some unfortunately are not. It's your own decision, I guess. Don't breathe on me. Uh, but people are hanging them instead of keeping it up over their nose and their mouth, they're hanging it under their chin or they're, they're allowing their nose free. What probably is happening is, I mean, they're uncomfortable. It is a scary feeling. It's like you're suffocating no matter what. My thoughts though on this matter are most of us are mouth breathers. So how does that make it feel better? If you take at least the nose off, then you're gapping the, the, the fabric or the paper for the mouth. Um, you need to have your nose and your mouth covered though to protect yourself and to protect others. So a lot of what yoga, yoga originally started with breathing. As it came to America, us were like, well, we're not gonna waste our time breathing and just thinking. So then we added the movements. So I thought I'd come back to thinking about some of the breath work that you could do to practice to be more comfortable. It sounds like from what I'm gathering that masks are gonna be required um, for everyone as soon as you get out of your house. I don't know about in your car or anything. But as well as that, it's not gonna be just a week or two. So grab this uh, video whenever you want practice it. A lot of the thing when you panic, like when I first started my job, I have to wear two masks for my kids to feel safe and my husband to feel safe. So I made a mask, made it so I had the vacuum filter in the mask, and then I had another mask on top. Could I breathe? No. I totally had closed up all my air. The next day I thought, okay, I'm going to lighten up. So then I put a, uh, piece of uh, flannel between my lips and the mask because it's it's abrading. You could see my lip. Um, I showed pictures to some people how my cheeks are all cut up from the mask and all. Um, a piece of flannel got into my lungs. And so I'm afraid to cough because I don't want people to think I have the coronavirus and send me home when in fact I'm just choking on my mask. So anyhow, I'm sorry, I babble a lot with you guys. I hope you just learned to fast forward me. Um, as you can see, as we talk, I'm a thinner person, especially now that I've been working out with you. I'm going to point out how hard this seems to be a better lighting. You see how these muscles move? Well, if you have um, uh, COPD, uh, oh my gosh, my brain is off today. Um, or any kind of breathing problems, asthmatic, you start getting the fear. This is your secondary respiratory muscles. We kind of go shallow. Everything hollows up. These are the people that generally breathe through their mouth. <laughs> it's very scary. I, um, I need my friend Robin to do speech therapy with me, so I just don't use my neck muscles, my vocal cords. I should be supporting my talking um, through my diaphragm. So Robin, if you're out there, <laughs> FaceTime me, <laughs> teach me. Um, okay, so we're going to try to keep all this relaxed. I want just inhale through your nose, nice and strong. Actually, let's set up our foundation. I'm sitting on the ground. I don't know where you are, obviously. Just sit up nice and tall. Open up this area. If it's collapsed down, half of your lungs, the front part of your lungs, will never get air into them because those lungs are pushing on the bones. So we want to be in a proper posture at all times, especially, like I said, with the masks on. You need everything open. You need that big barrel chest. 
So we're gonna stay up nice and tall, shoulders away from ear, shoulders back, breathe in your nose, and forcefully out your mouth. Again, in your nose, out your mouth. Continue on doing this at your own pace though. Here's the deal, my breath is not the same as your breath. I could make you hyperventilate or I could make you collapse if you're waiting for me, right? So I don't want you lightheaded or dizzy. Go at your own pace. Let's again, breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth. In through your nose and out through your mouth. In yoga, we have a pranayama breath called ujjayi breath. It's almost that sound of the ocean sound in the back. You're trying to shut off the back here. And you breathe in your nose and you breathe out your mouth. Oh my gosh, it's been so long I forgot that sound. Breathe in your nose and out your mouth. Actually, that's the secret. You're supposed to keep your lips sealed. So. Now I remember, I'm sorry. Breathe in your nose, keeping the air kind of circulating back in your throat. Calmly breathe back out your nose. Ah, maybe the oxygen's coming because I'm breathing. Breathe in, in, out. Do you hear that? It's that, um, is it Darth Vader? Remember, I've never watched Star Wars, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, all my friends that or ashamed of me right now. Okay, so I'm gonna come closer. Pretend that my hair is all freshly washed and no grays. Breathe in your nose and out your mouth, yeah, back out your nose. Again, in. <clears throat> kind of the growl, try to make it, it's hard to, I feel like it's really hard to do it. Think of it as an oceanic wave. That's the cue that I learned when I was doing yoga training. Let's do a five breaths of those. In. Fantastic. Take a moment, regroup, and then again, we're gonna breathe in our nose and out our mouth. I like this kind of thing because when we have those masks on, it's hard to get the cloth into up our nostrils to block it, and then we're actually blowing through the cloth, hoping that it, connect, it traps the germs, but this way the cloth doesn't suck in like happened to me with the flannel. So we're gonna do five breaths in your nose, out your mouth, audibly and forcefully. Did you get dizzy like me? I almost lost it, so I'm sorry. Regroup, let's talk to each other. Talk to me, I'll talk to you. Let's re regather our breaths. It shows how much most of us are so stressed we don't really do a lot of breathing during the day or we do just the shallow breaths. Just the upper chest moves, the neck muscles move, but nothing down below. Another one that we do in yoga, and I don't remember the name, we're, and I don't remember which side to start on. I'm kind of a failure at this. But I think you close the right nostril first and then you open that one and you close down the other nostril. So you're, I'm gonna mirror you. So do, do the correct, do the same side as me and then you're starting it on the right, the correct side. You'll be starting on the right. 
close down the right. Sit up tall. Breathe in your nose. Now close down the left and breathe out your, close down the right, I'm sorry, and breathe out your right. No, I can't mirror, I'm sorry, it's a disaster. Close down your right side, breathe in through your left. Close down your left side, just breathe out your right, mouth is closed. Now keep that finger there, breathe in through your right side. Close it down, breathe out the other side. Again, in. Close, out. Last time to, talking with it, breathe in. Close and out. Do you understand what you're doing? You're breathing in, kind of doing a loop and going out the other way. Then you're going up and around again. Um, I'm thinking about the people that have the allergies, the allergens. I know a few years ago, the practice, a lot of people were into neti pots, N-E-T-I-P-O-T-S. Um, I honestly don't know my feelings about them. I've never tried them. I don't know. The, the thought is that you're flushing out the allergens that are stuck up in your nasal passages. I worry because your brain's right there and granted it should be a sealed membranes and blah, blah, blah. But I'm not that good of a housekeeper or cleaner. I don't want to boil water to put it up my nose and all. But if that's something like you use or have used in the past, maybe you want to consider that or the saline nose drops and then do these breathing exercises. Okay, the final one and then Please sit with these, review them, pause, go back, watch so you don't get dizzy. Um, I'm gonna lower it, so if I get myself a very ugly thing, okay, I'm just gonna talk to you. If I play with my computer now, it'll probably shut down the whole thing. So, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong part. Uh, so, there's two different parts in our our breathing. Sometimes we do our, well, we do the upper neck and the upper, and then we do just the upper chest. But we've got this big diaphragm down here. It wraps all the way under the ribs and it acts as a balloon. Um, I asked you guys to correct me. Is it negative air pressure you bring in? Anyhow, as you inhale, the diaphragm starts at a dome. You inhale and it flattens out and it goes straight down. So that allows more air into your oxygen. So some people talk about just belly breathing. I am not a belly breather. I don't understand the concept. I can pretend to belly breathe. I have enough control over my stomach muscles even when I was ridiculously large having the babies. I could fake it. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna put you back down where we can see each other better. I think of my rib cage, let me get a little closer. My rib cage, um, I'm, so I'm turning down. So this is the front of me and the back of me is closer to my spine. Look how tiny and cute I am, huh? Um, what I wanna do is I wanna think about shrinking it in with an exhale and then seeing can you expand as you breathe in all the circle, like that hula hoop around you. Remember hula hoops? Breathe in is large, exhale, shrink it in. So inhale, exhale. Again, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Last time, inhale and exhale. I hope that makes sense, um, all of this. If it doesn't make sense, please message me or something. We could do something differently. Uh, the last one is a really good technique I enjoy, especially if I'm getting panicked. I mean, no matter what, I'm used to being in a mask 
I've worked my whole physical therapy career. I shouldn't say my whole career, but you know, we go in and out of isolation rooms, whatever happens. But I'm generally in it for an hour, two hours a day. I graduated in 1989. Before that, I didn't have any isolation cases. Um, but And I worked as an aide, so I shouldn't have been there anyway. Uh, anyhow, the bottom line is I have practiced with masks, but as my kids and my husband have made me use two masks, as I'm using them more often, I get nervous too. I feel like I can't breathe and all. That's when I go back to the thing of I can breathe. I could gap open my mouth a little bit in my nose to put a little bit more wrinkle in the mouth so it's not pushing so hard. And then I just go back to, okay, rib cage, inhale, expand it all, exhale, release, inhale, and exhale. And I take a few moments. If you panic and you start only this breathing, it's going to add to the stress level, the cortisol level that we're all feeling anyhow right now, and it won't do you any good. Well, from my babbling mouth to yours, I hope your breathing goes well. I hope you feel comfortable. Thank you for those that are wearing masks. Thank you for those that have a difficult time breathing, that you're doing some exercises. I want you to stay out of the hospitals. I want you guys all to stay safe. I truly, truly appreciate your time with me. Tomorrow, I absolutely solemnly swear that we will get back to exercising. Today, though, this seemed just wonderful. From my open heart to yours, namaste.